Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the quest Dragon Slayer 2. The quest requirements are Legends Quest, Dream Mentor, A Tale of Two Cats, Annual Magnetism, Coast Ahoy, Bon Voyage, Client of Current, and have a total of at least 200 quest points. Also, you will need to have started your Barbarian training to have access to the Ancient Cavern, which is the dungeon with the Mithril Dragons. Now, what you do not need to start this quest is the Corsair Curse quest, even though the quest start is west of Corsair Cove. As long as you have access to Tree Spirits, you're able to get to the Myth Guild. For the stats requirements, you will need to have 75 magic, uh, 70 smithing, 68 mining, 62 crafting, 60 agility, 60 thieving, and then 50 construction and hit points. Having a high range level is recommended. For the items that are a lot, and I'm just going to be doing the same thing that I did with uh, Monkey Madness 2, I'm just going to be putting all of them in the description with every single item that you need for every single part. For part 1, you will need to have one teleportation method to the Myth Guild, which is just like I said before, a tree spirit teleport, one teleportation method to Musa Point, one teleportation method to any bank to prepare for part 2, any kind of pickaxe that you can use, full graceful, one stamina potion, and a weapon to kill a combat 100. Because we're fighting a combat 100, he's just going to be using melee, so with melee protect you should be taking no damage, but if you want to be safe, just bring some food. Okay, let's start this quest by going to the Miss Guild. Alright, here at the quest start, let's talk to Alec King Kate. Select the second option, how do I gain access to the guild? And let's select the first option, yes, to start the quest. Next, we will need to go to Musa Point. And next, we will need to go to the bar just north of the banana plantation. Just south of the banana plantation, there you should find a bar, just like in the pirate's treasure quest. Here we should find Dallas Jones. Let's talk to him and select the second option. After a long conversation. Yes. Right, next we will need to go to Elvark's lair. So let's just run west. Uh, you pretty much know where that is located. You already have 200 quest points, so... Alright, here at Elvark's lair, let's climb over the wall. And here we should find Dallas Jones just north east of in this corner. Let's talk to him. Just keep pressing the spacebar and just next to him, here at the northern wall, there should find a blockage. Let's use your pickaxe on it to make a hole. Next, enter the hole and Dallas will follow you. Next, we will need to go to the eastern wall and there you should find an ancient machinery. Let's inspect it and read the old notes. Close it and now we'll need to fight the combat 100. So maybe use piety and protect from melee and inspect the ancient moral. And now a spawn appears. Let's quickly kill it.
After we have killed it, just investigate the ancient mural again. And now we've almost completed part one, just simply talk to Dallas once again to complete part one. All right, for part two, let's go to the bank. Now you may deposit everything. You don't need those uh, old notes anymore. Those are just lore, just drop them. Uh, let's deposit our entire inventory and now we will need to grab eight oak planks. 10 swamp paste. Then we will also need to bring along 12 of any kind of nails, but you will be able to bend them, so bring at least twice as many. And the better the kind of nails, the less likely you will bend them, of course. Then we will also need to have a hammer, a saw, and then a dig site pendant to get yourself to Fossil Island. Next, you will also need to have at least seven empty inventory slots. That should be it. And let's teleport ourselves to Fossil Island. Here inside the house of the hill, let's climb down a trapdoor here in the southeastern corner. And here we should find Dallas. Let's talk to him. He's really in this quest all over the place. Select the first option about the island. I will now need to find 24 map pieces. North in this room, there we'll find an open stone chest. Let's search it to find the first five. Let's use these on the incomplete map here in the center of the room. Yes, I have some. And let's now go upstairs. We go to the entrance just north and next to it there is a stone chest. Let's search it to find three more. Next, go west and climb down the stairs. Just north of the stairs, you'll find some fungi. Search it to find four more pieces of the puzzle. Next, let's go back to the basement and let's clear some inventory. Let's put these on the table. Yes, I have some. And let's go back outside. Okay, down the stairs, let's go south. And now we'll need to search a hook briar, whatever the hell that is. Oh, it's that it's dead, dead bush. To find seven pieces. Next, continue running east. And now we need to search a mush tree. Here is a search option all the way east. And these are the final five pieces of the puzzle. Let's go back to the basement and now it's time to make our map. Alright, let's do it. And now you'll see this map interface. This isn't a sliding puzzle, just like in the Monkey Madness quest. But if you click on it, you rotate it. You can also right click on it and rotate it to the left. To swap pieces from places, you just need to drag one piece and swap it with another one. I'm not sure that this map is going to be random for everyone but I've just put a picture on the screen of the solution, so have fun solving this puzzle, I guess.
Oh, this thing. The map closes automatically after you have completed it. It doesn't matter if you close it, the progress will be saved. After speaking to Dallas after you've completed the puzzle, we will need to go to the museum camp. Oh yes, dig site pendant of course. To the dig site. And then just take the boat. Senior. And then Junior. And now we are here at the museum camp. So here, just a little bit west-south of the tunnel shortcut, there you'll find the dwarf Jardrick. Let's talk to him and keep pressing the spacebar. After speaking to the dwarf, let's run west to the western shore. At the western shore, there you'll find a rowboat hot spot, just like in the construction skill. Just keep running to the western shore, and there's just west of the dungeon shortcut sign, there we'll find a transportation sign. Build the rowboat hot spot. Be sure to have 10 swamp paste and not 10 swamp tars. And now you have the rowboat. Let's travel with it. Yes, let's go, I'm ready, first option. Next, let's run north and then we will need to go northwest until we see a ruined courtyard. There, climb up the stairs and go south. Then there you should find a trapdoor. Climb down. And then just follow the staircase. And here we should find the NPC Dallas once again. If you climb down these stairs. Let's talk to Dallas. After speaking to him, we will need to go to the eastern wall and search the burnt skeleton. Here we'll find IVS Diary. Let's read it. Skip through some pages. Close it. Next, talk to Dallas Jones once again to complete part 2. Out of 9, by the way. Good, let's go to the bank to prepare for part 3. Let's deposit everything that we have in our inventory. It is a diary. If we need it, we can find it in our bookcase, in our POH. Let's go to the bank and deposit everything. What we need now is a cat speak amulet. Enchanted. We will also need to have a seal of passage. But only if you have not completed the Fremlic Elite Diary. We will also need to have one Astral Rune, one Hammer and a Pestle Mortar. Then we'll also need to have a Tinder Box. Aside from that, keep your full Graceful. Keep having one Stamina Potion. Then for the Teleports, one Teleportation Method to Trollheim. One Teleportation Method to Bob the Cat. It should be located usually either in Taverly, Varrock, Catherby, or anywhere in between. So I'm going to be bringing along Max K for Taverly teleport, Varrock teleport, and then a Catherby teleport. Next, you also need to have one teleportation method to Sofenum. I will be using my Max Cape to teleport myself uh, Polnifnich, and from there I'm just going to be taking the glider to Sofenum. And then lastly is one teleportation method to Lunar Isle. Good, if you already have a Goutweed in your bank from the Dream Mentor quest, Edgar's Roots quest, or you have gotten some extras because you already knew you needed this, you can skip this part and I am on the wrong spellbook. Let's teleport to Trollheim if you do not have a Goutweed and let's grab one real quick. By the way, if you do not know where the gout wheat is located from both of those quests, it is located uh, in the kitchen of Troll Stronghold.
Once inside the troll stronghold, let's go south to the staircase to go to the kitchen. Once in the kitchen, go a bit northeast and there should find some more stairs. Follow the path to find the storage where the Goutweed crate is located. I've already explained it in the Edgar Bruce quest and in a Dream Enter quest, so I'm not going to be doing it for the third time in a row. Uh, good luck getting the Goutweed. Oh wait, that's for me. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Don't. Ha! Not me. Just one note, do not click on the crate, just stand next to it. And once you stand next to it, then click on the crate. Else you will just stand underneath him, trying to get from the crate, and then he will spot you. Right, once we have the Goutweed, we will need to go and find Ba. So, he's most likely located somewhere in Taverly. To find Bob, you will need to right click on your cat's beak emlet and open it. Next you will just need to click on the whiskers until the eyes start glowing. That is the direction that you will need to go to. Just keep doing this until you find Bob. Bob, are you in the fletching shop again? Yes, he's there again. Let's talk to Bob, equip your Caspic Emlet first, of course. Where is Bob? Alright, after speaking to Bob, we will need to go to Sofenum. Good, let's go to Sofenum. I am going to teleport myself to Polnifnich. And from here, I'm just going to be running south to Sofenum.
All right, after arriving in Sophonum, let's go to the Sphinx and let's talk to her. Keep your Catspeak Amulet equipped and select the first option. And now she will do a some sort of animation on you. And now you are able to talk to cats without having to need to wield a cat speak amulet, just like the reward of Monkey Madness 2, but then with monkeys. Next, we will need to go to Lunar Isle. And there we will need to go to the Orionomancer. So basically, after completing this quest, you have one extra bank space. Okay, let's talk to the Omniorromancer and select option 3 and then 1. After that, she will give you a dream vial. Once you have this, let's run back to the bank of uh, Lunar Isle. And on our way there, let's use a hammer on the astral rune to smash it into shards and then grind those shards into dust. Next, we will need to fill this vial and we're going to fill it in uh, the town. Next to the bank, there should be a uh, water sign. Use a vial on the sink, use the gout wheat on the dream vial with water and then use the ground astral runes on it to make a dream potion, just like in Dream Enter Quest. Alright, now it is time to fight the first boss of this quest, so let's go to the bank and prepare to fight this boss. First, you can only use melee against it. It doesn't really matter what you use, but it is weak against Crush. His ranged and magic defense is very high. What you also can do is bring the runes to cast Vengeance when he announces his strong attack. Also, you will need to have a tinderbox and then just some potions and food. Potion. Super combat. One prayer should be enough, he isn't really that difficult. Pop, 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 pop. Vengeance for runes. Ah, by the way, the boss that we are going to fight is not a dragon. It is a human called Robert the Strong, and he is an archer. So bring some ranged defense armor. Okay, if you think you are ready to kill the first boss of this quest, let's go west to the room, just like in the Dream Mentor quest. Go inside this room and light the brazier, the uh, ceremonial and use the dream potion on it. By the way, if you die, you will be able to retrieve all of your lost stuffs by paying 100,000 GP to, I don't know, this chest. And that's just like the first option, yes. And here in the dream world, we'll find Bob and not Bob. Let's talk to Bob. By the way, also, if you die, you also do not need to have or to make another dream potion. You just need to talk to Bob and he will send you back into the dream world. Okay, this is the final time that you are able to uh, move away before starting this boss fight. If you think you are repaired, you use Piety, protect from missiles and go through the barrier. And here you'll find Robert the Strong of Comet 194. Let's attack him. And once he says something, uh, you simply need to either run behind a pillar or cast Taste Vengeance. I am not even potted. I'm a noob. Okay, Vengeance. When he announces his attack, be sure to have at least 60 hit points, because the max hit is uh, 60 of that attack. Ah, oh, Dragon Warhammer's back at 50% health, you idiot. 
Well, bro oh, fuck my mouse. Oh, this shit always happens. Okay, my mouse is back. Can I cause vengeance? Oh, boo. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna turn this shit off. Okay, after you've defeated Robert the Strong, you now see a cutscene of the Dragonkin and then Tristan and the other NPCs of the lore of this quest. Now, if you would do this quest on your own, you will need to memorize these people. Kimora wears the axe, Robert the bow, Tristan the sword, and Evias the... I can't even see what that thing is. Telegraph, we need this. If we are able to take this key, we skip like literally everything of this quest and we can just go to the end. Telegraph. <laughs> Okay, after the cutscene is over, Bob will talk to you. And if you can already tell, we are now we will now need to grab that dragon key, but that key has been uh, split into four pieces. And those are four different parts of this quest. So let's go to the bank and prepare for part four. Let's deposit everything and let's start with the most difficult one and that is Releka part where we will need to kill Forkoth. For that we will need to have some strong ranged gear as well as some strong defense gear. Okay this is currently the gear that I am wearing. It is a uh, Varax helm, Varax skirt, a Carol's top DFS because Vorkoth is a dragon. Then just some uh, basic ranged gear. Because Vorkoth also venoms, we will need to bring along a anti-venom potion or you will simply need to wear a serpentine helmet. You will also need to have the runes to cast multiple crumble undeads, but not more than uh, like 3 or 4. The runes to cast the crumble undead are 1 chaos, 2 air and then 2 earth runes. Grab like 5 of them just to be safe. Next, what we will also need to have obviously some good food and uh, a prayer potion besides from that a super anti-fire potion and if you do not have that just a regular extended anti-fire potion is also pretty good a uh, ranging potion of course then after we have defeated Vorkath we should also need like maybe like one dose of stamina one teleportation method to Releka to start the fight and then after we have completed this part, one teleportation method to any bank. I'm just going to be cautious and I'm just going to be using a one-click safe teleport, so a house tablet. Also very helpful is a self amulet, imbued and enchanted. Don't bring an amulet of anguish, just use a self amulet to get your extra accuracy and damage. That should be it really. Okay, and if you think you are ready to defeat Vorkoth, let's teleport to Releka and talk to Brunt the Chieftain. Select the third option about the Dragonkin.
Ah, oh, Dragon Warhammer. Okay, after speaking to Brunt of the Chieftain, let's go north. To the docks with the sailor in blue. The sailor that takes you to Miscellanea. If you do not have the fairy rings, if you don't use the fairy rings. There, we should find Torfin. Oh wait, the sailor is over there. The, the docks next to the sailor that takes you to Miscellanea. There's Torfin. Let's talk to him and he will take you to the island where Vorkoth is located. Once again, if you die to Vorkoth, pay Vorkoth 100,000 GP and he will retrieve all the items for you. Let's go north and climb over the ice to start a fight, but I'm first going to be, ex be explaining a couple of attacks that he has. When Vorkoth spits acid on the floor, don't stand on it or you'll take damage. Then also he will start dealing rapid fire damage. To avoid those, you just need to start walking around. Just keep walking and you should take no damage. Next, Vorkoth also shoots a ball into the air, some kind of fireball. And if he does that, just move at least two or three squares away from your current location, else you will die from one hit. And then the third thing that he does is when you get frozen, prepare to go to your magic spellbook and cast Crumble Undead because then a scorpion will walk towards you. If you are not in time, the scorpion will kamikaze himself next to you and you will take at least like 40 damage. Okay, for the prayers to use should be like rigor and protect from magic. And let's climb over. Uh, yes, don't show again. Let's hopefully hit something. Holy crap. Ah, oh, not again. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You guys just know that I'm just so pro at PVM because I'm not going to be showing my first attempt. Ah crap. These boots are made for walking. Oi! 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 Good! Once Vorkath is defeated, let's go north and climb over the ice chunks. After you are here, let's go west and just keep following the pass west. First go to the most northwestern corner, to that little tower. Drink a stamina potion dose, that's why we have brought it. Just keep following the path to that cave. Enter the cave. Uh, sure, there's nothing really dangerous down here. Once you are here in this cave or room, let's go south and then just go west. Go a little bit around and there, in the corner, there you should find a red lever. Pull it. Next, let's run east. Just go to the eastern wall and there you should find a room. Go to that room and the door should now be unlocked. 
and inside there we find two stone chests. Search both of them. Oh, never mind. Just search the northern one and you'll find the ancient key and your first dragon key piece. Okay, so after you have these two pieces, this is part first part completed let's go to your bank and prepare for the next part to get the next piece here at the bank let's just deposit our entire inventory and our equipment next what we will need is our full graceful we will also need to have something like two stamina potions a machete any kind of axe that you can use one teleportation method to the Kazari jungle I will be using a teleportation method to the portal in Brimhaven and afterwards I'm going to be using 200 coins to make the guy bring me to Shaila village and afterwards also one teleportation method to any bank after we have completed this part once again I will be using the Maxcape and besides from that, the rest of the inventory should be like one prayer potion and the rest should be just some decent food. I think monkfish should be good enough. Okay, when you think you are ready to go to the maze in a Kazari jungle, let's go to the Kazari jungle first. So, POH portals to Brimhaven. Right here, let's try to get inside of the Kazari jungle by chopping down the bush next to the tree and the rock. And then just, just keep going south. We should be able to chop this tree. Alright, once we are here, let's go southeast. And just keep going southeast until you see a dungeon sign, I presume. There's no dungeon sign, but we will need to go to this uh, rare tree sign. Once we are here, here next to the totem, let's enter the cave. And we are now here in the purple dungeon. Always keep your camera facing south, that is the easiest way to not get lost. And this is a voiceover and I'm just going to be acting as if I am your GPS. Oh yeah, there are three different kinds of golems in this dungeon. And they all have different colors. Red means they attack with melee, green ranged and blue with magic. So just pray accordingly. After you've turned right into the first street that you see, keep following this street and climb over the trap. Next take your first left and keep following this street. Climb over the trap right around the corner. And then just keep following the street and then just take your first left. There's another, uh, and then climb over the trap. Next, take right and just keep following the road. Just keep going until you hit a wall. Next, go left and climb over the trap. Next, take your second right, then immediately take a left and then a right once again. And there is another trap around the corner. Next, take your first right and then back left. And then take your second street on the right. There's another trap around the corner. Then take a 180. 
and just keep following this road. Climb over the trap and then just take your first left. Next turn left, then take your first right. After riding over this speed bump, take your first right and then the road splits into two. Take the right road and just keep following this one until you hit another speed bump around the corner. Just keep following this road. Next you just need to take the first left and then you just need to keep following the road and you've made it to your destination. Oh, holy crap! I'm dead! Surge the plinth once you've made it! Holy crap, this is fucking annoying! Oh, and teleport to your bank. Oh my god, I'm pissed off. Alright, that was the second piece of the puzzle. Let's go and prepare for part number six out of nine. Do not deposit everything. The only thing that we will need to grab is a light source. I think the uh, max cape is a light source, but I'm not really sure what the fire making perk is, but I'm just going to be bringing along the Kandrin headgear just to be sure. Besides from that, you can also deposit your coins, your machete and your axe. Deposit your dragon piece and restock on some medium level food. Keep your stamina potions and your prayer potions. Afterwards, we'll also need to have one teleportation method to any bank after we've completed this part, max cape once again, and one teleportation method to the Shajian bank. Shajian bank... Uh, Xerix. I think that one is pretty close. Okay, once you think you're ready, let's go to the Shajian bank. Rub, go to heart, I guess, and then just run. First I want to restore all my stats. Pool. And then heart. Okay, we have reached the Shajian house. Just go keep going west from the general store and there we should find the bank just south, I think. Yes, Zia is just too big. Okay, in the bank, just keep going south uh, west and southwest of the bank we should find an NPC called Sarah. Is this Sarah? Yes, the no, we should find the NPC called Amelia. Talk to Amelia. And basically she tells you where they are. Next, let's go southwest some more to the graveyard. Basically just south. And in the graveyard there is a little monument and inside that monument now there is a uh, some stairs all the way south of the graveyard there's also now a dungeon sign enter the crypt the only thing you need is some light source and there also are some skeletons i think they're skeleton mages so use some protect from magic from here let's go east Yes, east. And just keep going east until you can't go any further east. And from there you already see the ladder sign going down. From here let's go west, then go north and just go to the first ladder sign that you see. 
there is the next ladder. Let's climb down. And from there, we just need to go south. Just go via the big route, just keep going south. And I'm going to be using protect from missiles because this is fucked. What the fuck? Monkfish sucks. Go to the southern room, fuck this, go enter. Good, in this room there is a puzzle that is random for everyone, but the only thing that is random is the placement of these statuettes. In the four corners there are some statuettes that you should be able to pick up after you've inspected the tomb. What? Okay, here is then your riddle. So, let's exit this and uh, take all the four busts or statuettes. Everything that is the same for everyone is what I'm going to be putting on the screen right now. Okay, this is the solution of what is not random for everyone. Just take a piece of paper and try to solve it yourself. I'm going to quickly give you a little example. Now, for example, this guy is Kamora, but it doesn't really have to say Kamora by name. Kamora can also be named as the wielder of the axe or the one that came from Seranthium. If you would say, for example, that the one with the axe told the one with the bow who sat on the left side of him to be quiet, that means on the left side of Kamora is Robert. Do this with all the four statuettes and just be sure that all four of them are at the correct location. Athias North and then Tristan South. The left side of Tristan, do I know that? The left side of Avias is Robert. So he sits here, the left side is over there. So that should be Robert. On the right side of Komora sits Tristan. So on the left side of Tristan sits Komora. Com yeah, that's correct. Okay, that wasn't really that difficult, I hope. If you fail, you will be teleported all the way at the entrance at Shazian. If not, well, then just search the tomb and you have unlocked the third piece out of four. Okay, after you have this piece, let's teleport to the bank and prepare for part number seven out of nine. The only thing that we will need to deposit is our light source. And what we will need to grab is our ghost speak amulet. Or Mortena Lex three or four. We also need to have one Dragonstone, two Molten Glass, one Glass Blowing Pipe, a Chisel, a Spade, and then a whole bunch of Teleports, three to Varak, one to Port Pass Mattis, one to Drainer Manor, going to be using a glory in my house and then one to the swamp south of cannabis i will be using the farrowing code bkr one teleportation method to fossil island so a dig site pendant one teleportation method to falador one teleportation method to ardine 
And then one to Relic Asso once again, the Fremnik Boots. And of course, as always, after we've done this part, one teleportation method to any bank of your choosing to prepare for part number eight. And the rest of the inventory should be like one stamina potion and the rest is just some decent food. You don't need to have your dragon piece at the moment. Also, we will need to have at least one empty inventory spot. All right, let's start this part by going to Varrock and let's go to the Varrock library in the Varrock castle and talk to Reldo. Select the first option, by the way. After we've spoken to Tristan, uh, after we've spoken about Tristan to Reldo, we'll need to search the second most northern bookcase. There's a little red book, as you can see. Just search it and you'll find the Varrock Kansas records. Let's read it and talk to Reldo once again about Tristan. Afterwards, we'll need to go to Port Basmatis. Inside Port Pasmatus, we will need to talk to any ghost villager. Woo 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 woo, okay. Next, we will now need to go to the Port Pasmatus bank. Actually, the building just next to the bank. And in that building next to it, there we should find the ghost called Sarah. Let's talk to her. Just keep pressing the spacebar, I think this is going to be a long one. And after we've spoken to her, we will need to go to Drainer Manor to talk to Ava. So yeah, let's go there. All right, let's talk to Ava and select the third option. After we've spoken to her, we will need to go... Oh, no, you need to use a glass blowing pipe on the molten glass yourself, I guess. And you will now make a inert locator orb. Let's talk to her again. And now there is an option, a feel option. If you do it, you will get like at least 10 damage. But we will need to go to the Mortmire Swamp before we are able to use this hot and cold device pretty decently. So let's go to the Fairy Ring. And I'm going to be using the code BKR. That should be pretty close where I will need to go. Here in the swamp, let's start feeling this locator and start getting hurt. And let's just follow this orb where it uh, pulls us. Yep, 
This is on the other side of the fucking thing. Can I even go here? I can't, can I? Oh wait, I can, nice. East. What the hell, man? Okay, if you think you are at the, at the right spot, dig with your spade. And you have the fourth and the final dragon key piece. Hooray! Let's go to the bank and prepare for part number eight. Forging this thing into one piece. You don't need your ghost speak amulets, your low or orb, your glass blowing pipe, your dragon piece we still need our dragon piece we're going to forge it now what we will need is one stamina potion and a full graceful then we'll also need to have a couple of fire wave runes those are air fire and blood we will also need to have a teleportation method to the ancient cavern i will be using a game necklace charge then also a hammer Something to protect yourself against dragon fire, so a uh, DFS or a super anti-fire potion. And of course the uh, dragon pieces. The ancient key as well. And besides from that, you can bring anything you want, but we also need to have some food because we're going to be passing brutal green dragons and mithril dragons. Yeah, that should be about it. Let's teleport ourselves to the ancient cavern. Okay, ancient cavern time. Let's jump into the whirlpool. I'm too far away. Still too far away. Oh, no, okay. Okay, let's use protect from magic and climb down the stairs. Let's go to the mithril dragons, just a bit in the southeast should be here once we're there go west and just keep going west and in the northwestern corner there should find a little door sign use your ancient key on it to unlock that door and go down inside you will find three dragon heads and an orb in the center use fire wave on all the three dragon heads to activate the forge or the furnace once we have done that so let's turn on protect for magic and let's go back through the mithril door and now let's go back the way we came from ow that hurt after you've climbed down these stairs let's go southwest just keep going southwest to the southwestern corner and there we should find some new stairs. Climb up those stairs and then follow the path. Here are no more dragons and we should now have reached the uh, new very hot furnace. Here are a couple of anvils next to the lava. Just click on any of them to make your dragon key. After you've done this, we will now need to put this in the keyhole on Fossil Island. Where's my fucking teleport? Uh, let's first start by going to Dallas and put this thing in the keyhole on Fossil Island. So use the magic mastery 
and go to Mushroom Meadow. Go a little bit southwest and use the rowboat. We will now need to go back to that uh, ruined courthouse, I think. Some, some kind of ruined building. In that basement is where we will need to put this key. Alright, here at Dallas and Bob, let's use the dragon key on the grandiose door. It fits perfectly. And now we will start a very long cutscene, I think. Oh no, we first need to go north. Keep going north to discover a huge dragon. By talking to Dallas. Just keep pressing this spacebar and then there will be a cutscene. Okay, after the cutscene is over, let's go to Varak and start forming the alliance between all the human kingdoms. First, King Rold. Talk about the dragon threat. Just keep pressing the spacebar and he will tell you to go to various other leaders. The first one we will need to go to is Sir Amic Vars located in Falador. So go to the White Knight's Castle and climb up the Western Tower to the third floor. Talk to Sir Mike Vars about the dragon threat. Afterwards, we'll need to go and talk to King Lathis in Ardoin and talk to him about the dragon threat as well. After we've spoken to King Lathis, we will need to talk to Brunt in Releka. After we have spoken to Brent about the dragon threat, we will need to return to King Rold and attend the big meeting. 
So let's do that right now. So let's return to King Rold, talk to him, and then we'll need to enter his dining room. Just enter the dining room without talking to him, everyone is already here. And then when a option comes up, just select it's a good plan. And then we will need to talk to Bob outside. Talk to Bob here in the corner. And he will say that we'll need to defeat the uh, controller of the biggest dragon yet. So now it is time to go to the bank and prepare part 9 out of 9, the final part of this quest. Kind of, it's a pretty long one. Uh, let's deposit everything. This is going to be another voiceover because from this point onward I have fucked up a lot. First, gear up to fight a lot of different dragons, ranging from blue, green, brutal green, brutal red, black, mithril, basically everything that is currently on the game. And the dragons that you are going to fight are on a ship, so you are able to use melee or ranged. It is all up to you what you want to use. After we have defeated a steel dragon, which comes after the brutal red dragon, I think, we are going to teleport away and go to the bank, because that is a checkpoint. So first, let's go to Raleka. And let's go back to Tolwyn. Let's talk to him. Uh, yes, please. And now it is time to upheld the boats. Just keep repairing your boat that you're on. Uh, on the northern side there are two crates, and on the southern side are two crates. There's like a uh, water container to extinguish all the fires, hammers to fix the mosts. There are some rejuvenation pools for when the uh, Releka rowers are tired or being attacked. And there are also some swamp base to fill holes in the ship. And apparently I already have all those items in my inventory. Now we just need to wait for a dragon attack if there's a fire. Extinguish it. If there is a leak, fill it up with swamp paste. If there is one sick, use a rejuvenation potion on him. Also, be sure to check the masks frequently.
Alright, after the timer is up, it is now to do some agility. All the ships will be destroyed. Spoiler alert. And now we need to jump across a lot of the debris and then fight some dragons that we come across. After this cutscene is over. It's pretty self-explanatory, we just need to jump gaps and uh, walk over some logs. So first let's jump the gap. Just follow where you need to go really. There's a gap here, so go there. When there is a lock balance, always click on the first debris, the first item, else there's nowhere to click except for the first item. And then just keep jumping. This all depends on your agility level and hopefully not really on your amount of weight. The dragons that are attacking you, you're not able to uh, retaliate. So simply drink a anti-fire potion. Alright, the first dragon that we come across is a red one. Let's kill it. To help the wise old man and Brunt. Maybe use the NPCs as safe spots. Or dead guards, like the wise old man is doing. Alright, after the red dragon is dead, let's continue and move on. Alright, next dragon, iron. Let's kill it. Okay, helped these two characters. And let's just keep jumping.
and what color? Green. How oh, brutal green. Safe spots, safe spots, safe spots. Uh, use her. This is it? I think this is it. Yes, made it. Good, here's Bob. After you've spoken to Bob, you've passed checkpoint one. If you think you have plenty of supplies left to get to checkpoint number two, which is killing two green, two blue dragons, then also one black, one steel and one brutal red, then just climb over the debris and defeat those dragons. Else, just teleport to any bank to resupply and make your way back to Torfin and he will send you back to where we are right now. Let's start with a black one. Let's pay attention to that red guy and if he ever does an animation, just run away at least two squares. Let's just run three, just to be safe. The next three dragons that we are going to defeat only use dragon fire breath and melee attacks, so just pay your full attention to that red guy. If he ever does an animation, just be sure to run away at least two or three squares.
All right, after you've defeated the Brutal Red Dragon, you will now see a cutscene. And this is also checkpoint to past. Let's go to the bank if you want to prepare to fight a Mithril, a Adamant and a Rune Dragon. To fight an Adamant Dragon, you will definitely need to have a Antidote, because he has poisonous attacks. And for the Rune Dragons, you will need to wear insulated boots to negate most of the damage taken by its electricity attacks. By the way, you can buy insulated boots from any Slayer Master. When you think you are ready to defeat those three metal dragons, let's return to Torfin in Relaka and then ask him to take you back to the fleet. Just select yes and here we are back at the mithril dragon after checkpoint number two. Once again, just keep your attention on that red guy. If he ever does any animations, run away at least two squares. After you've defeated the Mithril Dragon, now spawns the new Adamant Dragons. And the Adamant and the Rune Dragons have kind of similar attacks. The Adamant Dragon spawns poisonous attacks underneath you and they splash like three by three squares. So you will need to run at least like four squares when he does his poisonous attacks. And then for the Rune Dragon, it's kind of harder to see, but he does electricity attacks. If you have insulated boots, you don't really need to run away because those boots negate most of the damage. But if you want to, you can also just run away from those incoming electricity attacks.
After you've killed the Rune Dragon, another cutscene will occur. And now it is time to fight the final boss of this quest, the Big Red Dragon of Combat 608. After the cutscene is over, immediately teleport to a bank to prepare for this battle. Okay, get away ASAP, I guess. That blue thing was a teleportation. Alright, the final part of this quest. We will need to have some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill the big Slifer the Sky Dragon of Comet 608. Therefore, we will definitely need to have some tanky ranged gear with maybe a Dragon Fire Shield if you do not have plenty of super anti-fire potions. We are only able to use melee weapons in the first and the fourth phase. So if you have a Dragon Warhammer or a BGS, those are definitely very helpful. When you start a fight, use your special attack of one of those two weapons twice. And if you hit zero both times, just teleport away, get your spec back and then just try again until you hit something. As for the bolts, definitely use Ruby Bolts Enchanted during the first three phases because he has 1200 hit points. And during the final phase, just switch to Diamond Bolts. Because he is a dragon, bring a anti-fire potion, also bring a ranging potion to boost your damage. And then for the rest, basically bring your teleport to Rilekka, one teleportation method to a bank, and then the rest should be some good food with Koran ones as combo food. Alright, when you are ready to defeat the Gelvec, I'm first going over the, all the four phases that he has. The first phase is the fire phase. And in this phase, while doing his regular attacks, he also does a, some kind of bombs attack. And those are 3x3 three three bombs that are lying on the ship. You cannot stand anywhere near them or they will explode and they cause instant death. While this is happening, Galvec is also doing his regular dragon fireball attack, which you will also need to avoid. So either run around in his melee distance, standing closest to him as possible, then just running horizontally, or you can stay in the center of the ship and then just run vertically. Just keep doing this until you've dealt one third of the damage. After the fire phase is the wind phase and occasionally he causes some gusts of wind to drain a lot of your stats. But also run energy and prayer can also be reduced. And in this phase he also starts using his ranged attack randomly. This is really the easiest phase. Just try not to get hit by the fireball while you have zero run energy. After the wind phase on the western side, we have the water phase on the eastern side. And in this phase, he will occasionally send out tsunami waves with a gap. After you see his animation of spawning the tsunami waves, you will need to 
as fast as possible find that gap and then keep running around horizontally where that gap is located because while avoiding the tsunami waves you will also need to be avoiding the Galvex fire breath attacks. And besides from those attacks he's also more likely to attack you with ranged attacks. So using protect from ranged might be better in this phase. But that is not confirmed. And then after the water phase on the eastern side, he now jumps to the center of the ship. And this is the earth phase. What you basically need to do is turn off your run and just keep walking around in circles, avoiding his rocks attacks. And while doing this, you are also avoiding his fire breath attacks. Just keep running around in circles, dealing some damage until he is defeated. And that is basically your quest completed. <laughs> yes! Yes! After the cutscene is over, you have spawned in Berthope. Now you simply need to return to the Myth Guild, return to Alec to tell him what happened to complete your quest. Yay! Welcome. Talk about the quest, tell him the story. Congratulations, you've completed Dragon Slayer 2 quest. You are awarded with 5 quest points, access to the Myth Guild, 25,000 Smith XP, 18k mining and 15,000 agility and mining. 
but you also have access to 100,000 experience in any combat skill to your liking except for prayer. Therefore, you will need to talk to Ellen just east of the statue in the center. Doesn't really matter, just put on everything. Yes. And then strength. Defense. And then hit points, no, not hit points. Uh, ranged. Yes. All right, now you have access to the myth guild. There's a lot of stuff to do here. Uh, there are magic trees, there's wrath, rune crafting altar. Therefore you'll need to go south of this uh, dungeon. Here's the fountain of Ult, which is the statue that is in the legends guild combined with the fountain of rune in the heroes guild combined. Then there are four element and two rune rocks. Rune rocks are currently gone. Here are all kinds of dragons, red, blue and green for Iron Man who wants to train prayer. And south of the green dragons there is a hole in the cave and there is the mysterious runes to go to Wrath Altar. That is the basement. Up this ladder is the library if you want to read on some more lore. And then finally, where you can buy the cape. Let's first grab 10,000 GP from the bank. Also, you're able to unlock the new super anti-fire potions by talking to this gnome. What kind of potions? And that's it. Uh, no thanks, your shop is currently quite shit. Up these stairs, there should be the Jack the Cape Seller for 10,000 GP. Let's buy two. Lol. Portals to the three guilds, legends, champions and heroes. And then here east is an anvil and two NPCs. Diana sells dragon weaponry and Erden sells the shield right half as well as the dragon metal shard. And the dragon metal shard is new. With this shard and the dragon metal slice, which you can get as a drop from adamant dragons, with also a dragon square shield, you can make a dragon kite shield, but that requires 75 smithing. You can also use the dragon metal shard, combine it with the dragon metal lump and a dragon chain body to make a dragon plate body. But this requires currently 90 smithing to make. Alright, that was my guide how to complete Dragon Slayer 2. Hopefully it helped, subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. Holy crap, range protect? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm dead. Crap! Oh, Mithril Dragon again. Okay. Uh, rage, rage. What? Are you fucking idiot?